Hey everybody. Today, Rado runs through Merlin, which is the latest big point salad -y Euro game from designer Stefan Feld, although this time he's not alone. He's co-designing it with Michael Renick, who is a very renowned designer in his own right. He did uh, Pillars of the Earth and Cuba and a bunch of other games beside. And I'm going to be doing a two-player run through today so you can see what it's all about. I've already got the game set up here. As you can see, this is a big old board representing the Great Round Table. And the situation is King Arthur is about to step down and is looking for his successor. We're Knights of the Round Table vying to prove our worth to be the next leader of the land. And... I've already done all the setup. Each one of the six principalities have their, their flags, their shields, their building materials. And each player gets one of these cards at random that says how what their situation is going to be. I started out in the orange principality um, with one purple shield, one blue building material, and influence in the gray principality over there. And Jen, she had one as well, starting out in blue. Fish Town with a gray shield, black building material, and influence in Brown Town. All right. And uh, oh, also, each player randomly gets a hand of four mission cards. These are things that Arthur has asked us to do, which will be worth victory points um, if we can pull them off. And anything else? No, I think those are really the main thing. Each player, like I said, I start with one building material. I've got influence to spread, and I've got my apple here. And then also, I've got my four henchmen who I can send around to do various things. I've got my Merlin die, my own die that determines what I'm going to be doing. I've got some Merlin stabs. And as an optional thing, I've also got this special ability board. You can play the game without it, but I would strongly recommend playing with because it definitely adds a lot more interesting depth. Oh, also, there are traitors in our midst. Three random traders, one for blue, one for gray, and one for black have been drawn for me. Jen, meanwhile, has two orange ones and a gray one. Although, she also that's, that was good luck because she has one gray shield, which means during the scoring phase, she'll be able to use this shield to shoo away the trader so she won't lose points. Okay, so enough talking about it. Let's actually start playing it. Let's start walking around this round table because that's what we're doing. At the beginning of every round... We are going to roll all our dice. I already did it, but what the heck, let's go on ahead and roll it again. Uh -huh. Actually, I even had a plan for what I was going to do, but I've just thrown that plan away. Let's start out. Now, when you roll the dice, you have to make sure there's no three or four of a kind. So I got two, two, three, and six. That's fine. Let's roll Jen's. See what she's got. A one, a five, a four, and a one. Okay, no wilds. So that's Coolio. I've got, I'm the first player. Because I have the mighty crown that I wear, and I'm ready to go. Now, on your turn, the main thing you're going to do is pick one of these dice and use it to move forward in a clockwise direction around the round table and activate whatever action you land on. This is a roll and move game for all intents and purposes. So I could move two spaces from where I started to land right here and get the grail. The grail is mine. And my other die lets me move two spaces, and I've got one that lets me move three, which means I could come over here to use my influence to get um, shields, which is not bad either. Also, each player has a Merlin die, so instead of moving myself, I could move Merlin. Players share control over Merlin. And the interesting thing about him is, when I move him six spaces, he can go clockwise, like me and Jen, but he can also go counterclockwise. So I could have him go one, two, three, four, five, six, and I could have Merlin come over here and get the grail if I were so interested. Right, <clears throat> so in addition to picking one of these dice and moving, I can also call in as many favors as I, as I want. They, they're represented by these flags. I've got one favor for the Orange Principality, which basically says, hey, wherever I land, don't do what it says. Instead, do whatever it says on my, one of my opponents. So if I moved right now and I played a three, instead of taking the Grail, if I didn't want it, I could call in this favor to do where, the action where Jen is, which is send one of my henchmen over to the Blue Zone, where she started out. So, you can 
use one die, call in as many favors. And over the course of the game, you might build up a bunch of these flags that give you all kinds of different abilities and whatnot. And also, on your turn, you can complete one mission. Even if you've got it set up where you can complete multiple, you can only complete one per turn. So, to decide what I'm going to do with my new dice I just rolled, I've got to figure out what is it I'm trying to do. There are three points to be had if I can collect four brown shields, um, which... Uh, yeah, I was over in this region. Now, to basically get myself to get shields or flags, i.e. favors, or building materials, or to exert influence on any of these regions, I have to send out my henchmen. The uh, flag bearer lets me get flags, i.e. favors. The shield bearer lets me get shields, which I use primarily to fight off traders during the scoring phase. The builder lets me get building materials so that I can build out here in the wilds and claim territory. And the lady-in-waiting, she lets me deploy influence. So anyway, I need to get four shields. That's going to take a while, I think, um, which is why it's worth three points. They, these are all worth one, two, or three points. So I don't think I can do that right now. This one is get two of my henchmen, the four folks I just talked about, in, deployed into the gray principality, way over here. You can see in every principality there's these little tents where you can put them. So if I can pull that off, I can get two points. If I can get my builder into the um, black principality over here, I'll, I'll finish this and score one point. And then finally, that's one point if I get my builder and my knight, my shield bearer, into the same region, wherever it might be. If I can do that, I can get one point. It would be nice to do one of these things, but which of these can I pull off? Now, Jen, of course, she's got her own goals she's trying to do, but we'll worry about that her, on her turn. Also, I can see there are other missions that King Arthur has set up for us, but these are this is a display that I, once I complete a mission, I can take one of these. So I could also be thinking about which of these missions do I want to collect in the future once I complete one of my own. Mm, that's a lot to think about, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, let's see. If I move Merlin, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my gosh, I could get the... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, this is Excalibur, duh. I could get Excalibur and I could get the Grail. If I move um, Merlin, if I move Merlin counterclockwise, one, two, three, four, five, six, I can get Excalibur. You know what? I'm not going to worry about my missions right now. I'm just going to um, move it, move it. I, because here's the thing. I can see that Jen has the ability to move Merlin one. And if I want to use Merlin right now to grab the Grail, I should do it. Because if Jen moves him one in either direction, then he will end up landing somewhere else. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, Merlin, yo, move six. And clockwise or counterclockwise, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I have just collected the Grail. Now this will help me out during the uh, scoring phase. And I should say, by the way, the game takes place over six rounds. Each round will play all four of our dice. And after the second... Now, uh, the fourth and the final round, we will tally up scores. And so, having the grail when we get to a score, that'll be really handy. So, that's what I did. I just moved Merlin, and wherever I landed, I did what he said. Now, I mean, if I didn't want to pick up the chalice, I could uh, use this to do Jen's action, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just happy to get this. Now, if Jen ever lands on this spot, either with herself or with Merlin, she'll end up taking the Grail away from me. So that's not good, but we'll worry about that later. So that was my first turn. Super duper easy peasy lemon squeezy. Jen's turn. What is she going to do? Well, again, we need to be think she needs to be thinking about setting herself up to complete objectives. So let's take a look at the ones she's got. All right. Like me, she's got one of getting two people into the same place. Any principality will do. Her uh, lady-in-waiting and her shield bearer into the same place. If she can get influence in the gray and the orange principalities, that'll be worth two points. If she can pick up two brown building materials, that will be worth um, two. Oh, wait. No, actually, I'm sorry. Those are orange. The brown and the orange look very, very close. If you, Well, they don't. This is the orange. You can kind of think it's brown, but it's orange. When you see a brown, you'll, you'll notice it's definitely different. Or Jen could get two points if she gets a favor from the brown and the gray. So those are the things she's keeping in the back of her mind that she'd like to make moves that gets her into a position to collect those. So getting two orange means um, basically landing over here and deploying her builder would get her one of these orange cubes, but then she'd still need to get another one as an example. But let's take a look now and see what Jen's capable of doing. She could move Merlin one space left or right. And she could do that right now, but I don't I'm, now that I've moved Merlin, she doesn't have to rush on because she knows I can't move Merlin again. So she could do him right now to move back one, which means um, she could you know, call upon her influence to get a flag. 
Now that wouldn't be bad because at the beginning of the game, she ended up with influence over here in the brown area and Jen needs a brown flag. So that's not bad. Moving Merlin back one to say, hey, where do I have influence? Oh, over here, I'll take one of those flags and then she's halfway towards completing this mission. Or instead, she could move Merlin right one and that would allow her to build and be the first to grab land um, and get bonuses that way. Ooh, that could be pretty cool too. But let's think about Jen herself. She's got a one, a four, and a five. Now, she can't go counterclockwise, but she can go clock clockwise. So if she lands here, this lets her convert any one building material, flag, or shield into a different one. Ooh. So if Jen uses Merlin to get a flag, and then, she, uh, and then on her next turn she moves here, she can convert one of the resources she has into the other flag she needs to complete this. That's a pretty nice one too. Let's, um, although she's got to think about, after she's moved one, she'll have used her one die. She still has to use her four and her five. What will that do for her? On her next turn, she goes one, two, three, four. Hey, she can um, get a brown cube by is where her influence is. Or if she goes five, she can swap missions she's got in hand for other ones. But if she goes one, two, three, four, then on her last turn, she'd go five. One, two, three, four. Oh, well, yeah. One, all right, so she goes one, and then one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five. She'll be able to get a shield. She will just miss taking Excalibur. And Excalibur is very, very cool. When you take him, you immediately get to um, push off one of the, uh, the traitors in your midst. And then also, on top of that, if you're still holding Excalibur um, when scoring, you have the chance to get more points that way too. Oh, also, I forgot to say, when you get the Grail, and I totally forgot this, I just picked up the Grail, right? Every time you get the Grail, you, you claim it for scoring, and you immediately get one apple. So I have two apples. Now, apples are awesome. If I recall correctly, I think they're worth one point at the end of the game if you haven't used them. That's nice, but what's better is, if ever I use an apple, I can change any die of mine to any value I want, which is very, very... Apples um, from this nice lady. I assume there's somebody in Arthurian lore, some lady who has apples. I don't know. But those apples are super powerful. Now, is it the poisoned apple? No, that's, that's uh, Sleeping Beauty. Anyway, though. So... Yeah, I, I think Jen does like that. She is going to use her one die and move forward one. Oops, no. Move forward one and convert a resource into another resource. She's got to give up one of her things. So she could give up this building material to get the flag she needs because she's also planning on getting a flag there. So she needs to get a gray flag. Actually, is there any other way to get a gray flag? Um... Because, I mean, if she land, if she were to land here, but she'd have to go all the way around, she could then deploy her flag bearer here, which would let her get a gray flag. But there's also other ways to um, get flags. Well, it's right here. She can get flags based on where she has influence. So she'd have to have influence there first. Um, right. I think this does make sense. She's going to come here. She's going to give something up. Um, one of her building materials, one of her shields, or one of her flags to get a different one of any color she wants. Now, she doesn't need this blue flag, so I think she's going to give up this favor from the blue principality, which is an awesome favor. It lets her move herself counterclockwise. As you can imagine, that would be a huge deal, but Jen is going to give this up, um, so it goes back over here, to swap it for a gray. All right. And now, this gives her a special ability too. When she calls this favor in on a given turn, she can complete two missions instead of the normal one, and she'll immediately score two points if she does that. So anyway, so Jen just came here and traded one favor for another because she's building up for her mission there. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. My turn again. All right, I've still got my three dice to go. Let's go on ahead and use one of my twos, and I'll go one, two, and Excalibur is mine. Okay, and I can now immediately eliminate one of the traitors, my choice. Now, um, for every traitor that I do not eliminate, by the time we get to the end of the second round, I'm going to lose three points. I need blue, gray, and a black shield. I, I can get rid of one of them now, and I should get rid of the one who I do not think I'll be able to get that shield. Um, let's see. Black is coming up. Gray is coming up. Blue is the furthest away from me. So in two rounds, I think I've got the least chance of making it all the way over here to pick up a blue shield because, you know, i got to land there. Although there are other ways to get shields as well. So I think I'll eliminate this blue traitor. Be gone! And I effectively just scored three points, or I, I prevented myself from losing three points. All right. So thanks, Excalibur. You're the bomb, as people know. Okay. So now it's Jen's turn. She will... Ooh. I was going to say, she was now going to move 
Merlin back one space where therefore she could use the influence she's got over here to get and then she could complete this this flag but here's the thing now that Jen has a great um, completing this mission does not consume the flag she just has to have these flags to score two points but now that she's got this flag if she could set herself up to where she has two missions she could complete at the same time because normally you can't do that she could score two bonus points so while she was thinking she was going to go ahead and complete this right now, maybe she should put that off for a little bit and try to set herself up to complete something else as well. Ooh, because there's two extra points to be had. Um, but what else can she do? She needs to pick up two orange cubes. Um, and this would be a way to have done it, but she's just used this to complete the other thing. No, no, no. I mean, she could go for it. But you know, either way, let's go on. Ugh, that's the other thing too. She has a one to be able to move Merlin. And... Moving back would let her get that mission. That'd be a big deal. The sooner she can complete a mission, the better because of these bonus, which I'll come to in a second. But it's also equally sexy for her to move forward one because she would be the first to be able to build. Now, she has a black building material. This is what she um, had right from the get-go, which means if you, if, she, if you put it here, Jen could build in any space in this direction, this direction, or this direction. So if she builds in this direction, she could build here, here, or here. There are three towers that Jen could build on. Every time you build on a tower, you immediately get to claim one influence, one flag, or one building material, or I'm sorry, one shield of your choosing. So, if Jen were to build right now, she could be setting herself up. I mean, this would be, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, instead of moving Merlin back to just get a flag because of her influence, she'll move Mer Merlin forward. And so, that triggers the build action. So, she's got this is what she started with. Where will she build? She will build right here. Okay, so now, um, it, it costs this. This basically goes back, and Jen marks that she has built in this river land. And now, there's two things that happen. One, like I said, she immediately gets a reward of her choosing, and Jen now has the majority control of this river land. When we get to the scoring phase, since it's, it's four big, that's four points for Jen. So, unless I spend some time and resources building in this space, this space, or this space, that's four points for Jen. That's actually um, 12 points for Jen at the end of the game if um, I let her have this Riverland uncontested for the whole game. Wow, that's really awesome. All right, so anyway, so Jen built, she spent the uh, resource, she's got that. Now, she could have built over here, but this is only two. She could have built over here, this is one. She would, I mean, and it could never be taken away from her. She'd have that. But Jen is hoping that if I ever build, I'd rather build where there is a tower so I can get a bonus. But then I'm leaving four points for Jen. So that's a tricky decision too. But in, in the meantime, Jen could deploy influence someplace or get a flag of her choice or get a shield of her choice. She needs an orange shield to fight off this orange um, traitor. But she'll worry about that later. Because if she gets that flag now, she can complete that. So she will. She will go on ahead and get a brown flag Right, so that was her turn, a very big turn. She used Merlin to build, she got a bonus, and now, remember, on your turn, you can complete one mission. Jen says, I'm completing this mission. Hooray! Oh, now, Jen has another choice. She can either claim two points right now and be the first on the board with some victory points, and of course, the victory point track is a full 360 as well, or Jen can trade this mission in to give herself a cool special power. That's what she's going to do. She's not going to take the two points. Instead, she looks here, and this is her flag bearer. So this means she can unlock. She's discarding this to unlock a flag bearer power. So this just goes to a discard pile. And if we look, here is the flag bearer column. And since this was a level two mission, it was a two victory point, that means Jen can either unlock the level one or the level two power for her flag bearer. And she'll mark it with this. You can have up to four of these special powers. You can give up four missions to get four powers that you'll have for the rest of the game. So if Jen takes the level one, which is obviously not quite as good, from now on, if Jen ever finishes a flag bearer based mission, she'll get a bonus point. Although, as it happens, none of her missions are flag bearers. And in fact, there are no flag bearer missions out there. So I don't think she's very excited about that. She will take the level two, which makes her flag bearer more powerful. 
Normally, when you deploy your flag bearer, you've got to deploy him to the space you just landed. If you landed over here, you got to deploy him over here. But from now on, when Jen deploys her flag bearer, she can deploy him anywhere. So that makes it much easier for her to get specific. You know, if she lands, you know, in a future turn, if she lands over here and deploys her flag bearer here, she'd get a purple flag. But Jen could deploy and get any flag anywhere she wants. So that is a huge deal, and that's going to help her out for the rest of the game. She is very pleased with that. Well worth sacrificing two points. And now, um, she's down to three. At the end of her turn, if she completes mission, she's got to take a new one. So she could take any of these, or she could draw blind. So now that Jen is the queen flag getter, she wants to get more missions that need her getting flags. This one, which is worth three... Um, she needs to have a purple flag, a gray building material, and a black shield. So, is this the one she wants to get, take for herself? <sighs> well, the other ones don't need flags at all. She could go blind, but she might not. So, she'll just go on ahead and stick with that, because, hey, at least it needs one flag. All right. And it's a big three-pointer. And it's a lady-in-waiting three-pointer, which means if she completes that, instead of taking three points, she could unlock the, the highest level for her lady-in-waiting special power, which would be awesome, too. Boom! Right out of the gate. Uh, things are exciting. So, back to me. Back to my turn. Okay, so I've still got my three, and I've still got my two. And I'm going to play both of those before the round is up. So, if I play my three right now, I'll go one, two, three, and this just lets me swap um, objectives for others. Not excited about that. So, instead, I'll play my two and go one, two. Hey, I've just landed at the Brown Principality. Whenever you land on these spaces, it means you get to deploy one of your folks to that area. And remember how I need to get... Four brown shields. I think I'll send my shield bearer on out to his little shield place. And that gives me my first of the four brown shields that I need. Hmm. Do I want to do that? What are my other things? <sighs> Instead. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is nice. Um, this is worth one point. If I get my flag bearer and my builder into the same zone, I can score a point off of that or unlock a level one ability for my builder. So I'm halfway towards that now. I just got to get my builder into this zone. Although, how am I going to do that? Well, I'll worry about that later. So anyway, so I landed here, deployed my shield bearer, got a shield. I'm starting to work. And now it's Jen's turn. She's got a four and she's got a five. I started to think about this before, but I don't remember. Let's see. If she goes a four, one, two, three, four, she can um, get a building material from wherever she's got influence. And then she'd go on her next turn, one, two, three, four, five, and she'd take Excalibur, yo. Yeah, Jen is totally going to do that. Um, although, let's think about the other one. One, two, three, four, five. A swap and then one, two, three, four. Either way. Yeah, she's going to go one, two, three, four and land there. And Jen looks around. Currently, she only has one influence. And it says, hey, wherever you have influence, you can take. It's only one. If she had influence in a lot of places, you have to pick one place. She's giving herself a brown building material, which means later on, she could use that to build over here or over here and get another tower bonus. Um, and unfortunately, she does not have an objective to get brown cubes. These are orange cubes. But still, she'll just use that to build and get more land. Yay! Okay, so that was Jen. She just did that. And now my last action, I'm going to move one, two, three. Now, I have to admit, I'm not that excited about this. This is get victory points equal to the number of, of uh, building materials I've got. I've got one building material, the one I started with. So that's one point. That is no bueno. One, two, three. Let's think about this for a second. Um, I, I could get one point, or remember, I can call in a favor. I would have to throw this orange flag away. But you know what? I don't have any objectives that require the orange flag. If I throw this away, I can duplicate the power of Jen, wherever she is. And Jen is over here. So if I call in this favor, which is what I think I'm going to do. Right, so first of all, I am going to move. I'm going to move the one, two, three. That's what the die says I got to do. So I did it. And I'm not excited about that. I don't want victory, one victory point. I don't need this orange flag. So I'm going to I'm going to spend it to copy Jen's action, which means I can get a building material from someplace that I have influence. And at the beginning of the game, I had influence in Greytown, so I've just gotten my second building material. Now, unfortunately, I don't have. Oh, wait, wait. When Jen took that, a new one should have come out, which is another simple one: get your lady in waiting and your builder into the same space. We don't have that, but that's something we might get later. So, um, I've got another building material. I've got two building materials now, but I have no objectives about build, uh, collecting them. But, hey, that means um, I'll be able to build two manors out there. And also, see, now, now if I landed on this space, it'd be worth two points instead of one. A little bit less exciting. Uh, but, say, I'll be. So, that was my last action for the round. Um, wait a minute. How, what? 
Oh dear, Jen still has two dice. Did I skip a turn of hers? I must have. Oh shoot. Um, right. So I did Merlin, and I, I, I did I did a big Merlin, and then Jen moved, and then I did a baby move, and um, Jen did her thing, and then right, and then oh I did that. Oh I, I jumped ahead. Shoot. Everything I just talked about. I'm not doing that yet. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Oopsie. Right. Um, although. Well, no. Okay, I moved here. I got my uh, my shield that I needed to collect. That's what I did. And then I accidentally took another turn. It's Jen's turn. No. It, no. Okay. No, this is right. I just forgot to move Jen's die over here. So anyway, yeah. So Jen had done that. That's how she got there. Then I went the one, two, three. I did everything I said, which allowed me to get the, um, the building material. So that was my last turn. And now it's Jen's last turn. She's going to go five. One, two, three, four, five. And boom! She steals Excalibur from me, which lets her immediately eliminate one of these guys. She has two or- She already has a gray to take care of him, so she'll get rid of one of the orange traders. She just saved herself three points. And, folks, that was it. We have just finished the first of six rounds. Um, so, at the end of the round, we move on to the next. All the dice got to get re-rolled. This is my Merlin. Um, ah. Wait a minute. Right. Oh, yeah, I just forgot to move my three because that was last one. Okay, so all right, hold on a second. Here we go. Here I am, and here Jen is. So we got a re-roll for the next round. Also, the first player marker moves. Jen will be first going into the next round. Oh, nope, okay. I almost got three of a kind, but I didn't. So that's fine. Three or four of a kind means a re-roll, and Jen did. So Jen's got a re-roll until she doesn't have three or four of a kind. Okay, that's more like it. She's got a three on her Merlin and a one... Five, four. And Jen is the first player out of the gate. And so we got a whole new bunch of dice. We got to start thinking. And Jen really wants to start leveraging the power. So what could she do? She has a one, which would let her get a shield from wherever she has influence. Or a four, one, two, three, four, which would let her build again, and she's got building material. Or a five, which would let her get points based on... She's not excited about that. She also has a three for Merlin. She could right now go one, two, three, and get points based off of influence. Not exciting. Or backwards. One, two, three. Ooh. One, two, three. She could move Merlin back here and um, deploy one of her folks. And it would either be one of her folks into this region, or if it's her flag bearer, she could deploy him anywhere. And um, why would Jen do that? Oh, she could deploy. You know, no, she would. She uh, basically wants to get that purple flag. So Jen could start working on that by moving Merlin backwards, and then still do her other stuff. So I think, yeah, right off the bat, right off the bat, Jen is going to move Merlin not forward three because that's pretty boring, but instead backwards one, two, three. And so Jen now gets to, um, yeah, deploy one of her people. And so it would be nice to say put her lady in waiting here so that she because here's the thing at the um, at the at the end of this round we're in the second round we're going to go to scoring there will be scoring for majorities in influence I've got the majority here although it's a, it's a majority of one so I'll score one point Jen's going to score one point over there Jen could deploy her influence here and now we're tied we'd still split it but if Jen could get another one she would win three influence but by the same token the more her influence is spread around the more these actions where use influence to get things becomes more valuable so Jen could do that or she could get a shield although it's, it's a gray shield. She already has a gray shield. But I, more importantly, Jen is going to deploy her flag bearer. And he would come here to give her a... Uh, but she's not. She can send him anywhere she wants. Send him over to the purple town so that she can get a purple favor. Now, this favor, if Jen ever wants to use it, it lets her flip a die. Turn a three into a four. Turn a one into a six, etc., etc. So Jen now has three favors she could call upon. She needs to get a gray stone and a black shield. And she will have completed this level three quest. Um, which is either worth three points or, even more importantly, a big, sweet payday. So that was Jen's first move. She's very excited about that. Although, wait! You know what? This was a Merlin move. I think Jen's going to push it a little bit further. I talked about how we have apples. Oh, by the way! Um, yeah, yeah. We talked about how we have apples that let us change the die value anything we want. We also start with Merlin's staff. 
If you want, on a turn where you control Merlin, you can spend one of these stabs, which again is throwing points away. These are worth points if you don't use them. And you can activate Merlin's ability, or wherever, you can activate the space wherever he landed a second time. Jen's going to throw away some points and activate this space a second time. Which means she could do that to um, put somebody here, or she could send her flag um, bearer out someplace else and get another flag if she wants. Ooh. Wow. That's pretty cool. I mean, heck, she could just start trying to collect all the flags. Um, but, but, I was talking earlier about getting influence. I know Jen does like to get influence. She is going to deploy... Ooh, this is an... Uh, okay, let's rewind for a second. Jen deployed her guy over here, right? To get the purple flag. If I'd been thinking about... Uh, that's a good thing. Jen needs it for the objective. But, since Jen is using Merlin's special power... Jen, since she could deploy two people, instead, maybe she says, you know what, I'll deploy the lady in waiting. She was talking about that. So now she has some influence over here. It'll help her on a lot of these spaces. And now there's uh, an area control dominance battle going on here. We're both tied. And now, um, if Jen activates Merlin again, she can do this a second time. She could do the flag bearer before. Or instead, she could send her good Sir Knight, the shield bearer over here, and get herself a gray shield. Now, why would she do that? She doesn't... She doesn't want a gray shield. She needs a black shield for this. But hey, you look at, at now on her turn, she's got these two folks deployed at the same time. That's an objective. Jen has just completed a mission. She can score one point, or she can take the level one special power for her knight. You know, Jen, she's taking the level one special power for her knight. And so from now on, whenever Jen completes knight-based missions, she gets an extra victory point. So I think she wants this or this because they're worth extra points. Yeah, baby! Let's see. This is have influence in purple, a black building cube, and a, a brown shield. And this one is a brown shield and a blue shield. So I think, or Jen could draw blind. But she really does want to focus now because she's got that special power on completing night based missions. So, so take that. What could she have gotten? All right, it was a lady in waiting. Get two, any two people into the um, orange principality. All right. So that was Jen's turn. Again, a very cool move. She threw some points away, but she did it for a special power. We're now tied, and all of these influence spaces are more valuable to her now the more influence she gets deployed. Nice first move for Jen. Now let's talk about what I'm going to do. Well, hey, I could now I don't have to worry about Merlin. I know where he's going to be. Hey, I could do him right now and get the, the uh, Holy Grail back, which would give me another apple, which would give me more control over my dice. But I don't have to rush on that. There are no other players, so he's going to stay there. So... I've got a six, a six, and a three. That would be one, two, three. This is change something into something else. Four, five, six. This is get um, flag from one of my places where I've got... So I could get a gray flag. I don't need gray flags. I probably want to do this to start swapping because, hey, that purple shield I've got that I don't need, I could maybe turn it into a brown shield and start working for a big payday. So that's a possibility if I land here. And then after I do that, my next move, one, two, three, four, five, six, gets me into Blue Town. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, ah, gets me into swapping stuff. I'm not particularly excited about that. No, I'm not. Um, let's see here. So what do I do? What do I do? Um, if I go instead for six, one, two, three, four, five, six, hey, I get a flag, and then I can go one, two, three, and then one, or, or I could go. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, move one of my guys somewhere and then one, two, three. Yeah, no matter what, I'm always going to land there unless I change things up. But remember, I've got apples. I can land anywhere I want. So I need to be thinking about completing these missions. For instance, it would be awesome if, say, I were to use an apple to um, change any of my dice to something and turn one of these sixes I've got into a one and then use that, and then move forward one space, and hey, I'm over in the black. You know what? I think I'm going to deploy my builder over here so that I can get a black building cube. So I, I've got a lot of building opportunities now, but more importantly, I just completed a mission, get my builder into, I think this is the pen dragon or something like that. I'm not going to take the point. I am going to, from now on, I want to do builder missions, and it just so happens I've got two more builder missions in the queue. None of those are builders, so I'll just draw blind and... Oh, that's a flag bearer. All right. Although, I knew Jen wanted this, so I'm glad I got it. 
All right. So I used an apple to land so I could complete a mission, and um, that's cool. Now, also, I should say, when we get to the scoring, for every one of our people that are deployed, they're worth a point as well. It's all written down right here. Um, we lose points for any of the uh, people we didn't get rid of. We gain points for the land. We gain points for influence, and we gain points for our deployed minions. So that was a point as well, in addition to giving me a special power for the rest of the game. Okay, so that was my turn. Jen's turn. She's got a 1, a 5, and a 4. She can't mess with Merlin anymore. What does she want to do? She needs shields, and she needs a blue and a brown. Um, so she could say, just move one to land here, and get a shield of some place. So she could either get a gray shield or a brown shield. She needs a brown shield, yo. So she will take that, and now she's halfway towards completing this. Easy peasy. My turn. All right, I've still got um, Merlin in my back pocket, and I've got that six and that three. And by the way, everything's changed now. One, two, three. Um, get points based on the number of shields. So that's two points, not that exciting. One, two, three. Get the chalice. I've already got it, but I will still get another apple. Uh, and then one, two, three, convert stuff. So that's what I've got, unless I want to start using special powers to manipulate things. Um, also, let's not forget, after I use um, Merlin to either get the chalice or over here, I could use a staff and activate him a second time. So I've definitely got options there, too. <sighs> right. Um, what to do, what to do. So many options. You're just drowning in options, but it's all about trying to make the right choices to leverage the powers you've given yourself, to complete missions, to give yourself more powers, and then also to get your influence all over the place for influence scoring and to get building. This is really bad. I don't want Jen to get 12 points, but I don't want to build in a place where all I'm doing is taking um, six points away from her. But hey, if I build any of these spaces, that's six points. That's not nothing. Maybe I should start trying to arrange a situation that I could get a um, build done. Because if I don't do it this round, this is the end of the second round, Jen's going to score those four points. So, uh, um, if I get built... And again, remember, I've got another apple. I can change dice to whatever I want. But you know what, folks? I think I'm going to stop right there. Because that should just give you a basic idea, just scratching the surface of how deep, how much there is going on in Merlin. If you want to hear some final thoughts now, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.